Hello, welcome back to the Ether Keep. My name is Levin Seti, and you fell for every single one of my silly little hoaxes and ploys, and that's okay. It's defense time again, and I have this team that I was very excited to show off, and I got less excited about as the week went on. We'll talk about all that, but first, look who's here, and look how it works. Now, Dimitri is a very challenging unit to deal with in a lot of cases. Thankfully, ooh, I had a near savior this time. She was right there. And we came prepared for these sort of vantage strategies because... Well, first of all, they failed to take out Aegon, which would have been a great move if you could get it. But also, Citrine not only has pre-charged Glaciers, but also Hardy Bearing. And from here, the team kind of just gets in there and can kind of do what they want. And my trap was a little bit broken by losing unit turn one, but it turns out that without the trap, we still have follow-up and reach and unpredictability, and we can just keep on going in. Mirabellis is involved too, and we even finish off the menace himself. When it works, it works, and I like to see it. So where did we start? Well. First of all, we got lucky with a wipe on just the old team. We've seen the old team, nothing too interesting there, so let's skip ahead to where I started getting creative. This is how this team came to be, right? So I wanted to get the savior involved, and I found it's very difficult to balance the three effects of these that all be within two spaces, and fitting in a savior, and so that's why Ivy is here, because she has that range without needing the support of these other units. Um, Edelgard is in this spot because we want to jump down, dance her, and then Soaring Guidance means that these two units now can attack down here, so it gives us a whole extra lane of coverage. Um, unfortunately, this means Soaring is a little bit exposed, but we did our best to cover that with traps. So, that's sort of the idea. Here is it in action. We, in fact, um, actually at least slow down Edelgard. With, uh, with near save and defensive specials, but it's not enough. Like, I thought we were supposed to, I thought, I thought Brave Adel was supposed to brick wall this thing, and it turns out it's just kind of a, a minor, a minor inconvenience, right? But, you know, so it goes. Anyway, even though I forgot to put the engage ring to get flare up, uh, we still get it off. And we get two KOs, which is a very solid showing. And in fact, it's solid enough that this player didn't want to keep going. So after that, I put my real thinking cap on, and we built the team that you just saw. And some would say, this is bad data. I would say, this is pretty ideal data. I think this is exactly the data I want to be seeing. And then we already watched this one. But the next day, we, we got like nowhere at all. We immediately get hit by something that I considered to be not useful data because this player was going to win no matter what. We have someone who really cares about AR on our hands and uh, we have someone who runs this set on Krom because nothing is stopping it from getting in there. Not this trap, not Gatekeeper, not Murr, none of it. They also have this, which makes me think that they have Joel Brain, which means that they are very smart and very good at Fey. So how do they approach? Just watch this. The Guidance, the Dance, the Re-Guidance, the Trap Neutralization, the Charge. Taking out my Dancer. Easily taking out my far my Near Savior because of the extra damage. And just forcing every Gale they possibly can on me as hard as possible. Using the chip damage to one tap Frere with a red unit who doesn't have DR piercing, and the double shutdown from Sather. It this really seems like one of those cases where I would have had to come up with something completely novel to shut down this player. And Squeeze Juice, you played dang well. I didn't even want to rematch you because I saw what you're like, and I saw this was your display unit. I just have any stuff to do. <laughs> I don't have enough ladders for this. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled back to your regularly scheduled victorious content. We have the guy. I want this. This is an amazing unit that would be so fun to use 
Someone buy me one of these. Uh, you can super chat me in my next stream, which I will be doing more of because this is new computer SETI. I'm actually recording this live in OBS for the first time, so hey, while you're subscribing, comment down below if anything is significantly better or worse than you're used to. I hope this is good because it'll make it a lot easier to be prolific with fun content and post more, hang out more, do more stuff. I hope it's a good thing. Please let me know. All right, what else do we have here? Your regular, a lot of guidance on Plumeria now, and we have the batteries for Marth. So we're just gonna, they're just gonna step right up. And once again, unfortunately, um, it's a case where Citrine has hardy bearing and that's all that really matters. Now, since we've seen a couple of replays, before we watch this one, let's just talk about how the team is supposed to work. Now, the idea is if someone tries to tank this or doesn't understand the range extension, what happens is Mira dances Frere, she has Soaring Guidance, so now Ivy and Igrin can hop down here. But also, Ivy has a rally, so she can Soaring Guidance over Mira and rally Citrine, meaning that Igrin can also get down to here. So basically, almost every tile on the map can be covered by this massive growing wind, which I think is pretty cool. At the same time, we have Igrin spreading her buff to Citrine, who then spreads it to Gulveg, so these trenches that look like they're locking her in actually do nothing. That's the basics of the team. Here it is again in action. We have a, uh, you know, best Omni tank in the game, allegedly, probably, because of Miracle and whatnot. But when you are epic, first of all, I don't really understand how the AI works on that. I don't really know what's going on there. It's kind of crazy to me. Like, why did the rally happen before the dance? Couldn't tell you. The team is so... The team is called codenamed Trap Queens, and there are so many traps, I don't even know about all of them. But, um... Miracle can't help you when you're already at 1 HP, and that is why Igrin is my favorite unit, and that's why I'm suffering to build a dark defense in Goto bonus season. Which is coming up. Okay, now we get into the dark times. So, Waffle Tronic, which I can only assume is next door to Freddy Fazbear's or whatever, it just sounds like some sort of breakfast arcade. Uh, it's more of this, it's some of this, which is an interesting unit to see on offense. What's it look like? You don't even need this time trap for when you just have 70 HP. Ridiculous. Ridiculous game that we choose to play. Uh, so they actually buy a free turn because Goldveig gets no range. They can just go in as deep as they want. And once again, the near save just not doing as much as I thought. Probably I should have been running Pavis instead of Escutcheon, but I don't feel like that accounts for all the problems I was having. And, uh, they... This doesn't look safe to me. This looks like I should have won. But the rally ends up being the worst thing that could happen to me. And we get baited really hard, and that's that. There's nothing else to see here. But now we come upon Crimson. Crimson, who... Look, I was planning for the one range clears didn't plan so much for the two range clears, and you can already tell this is one. So, the classic Warpy Dorp, and can take out the near savior just like that. We got some Fury to get into range, take out Frere, I think because he's the hardest for the melee units to take down. Valoria still doing it. Scyther's in position to freeze me out again, because life is pain. And it's really that simple from here, I mean... Any player could win this map if it started right there. But to get there takes a lot of skill, so like really well played by both of these. I'm not trying to hate, I'm just upset with myself for failing. Now, we get a brief reprieve. Vanillas came by with a double save strat. And this is probably the unit I was most scared of this season because like shuts down the warps, has DR against the AoE, just infinite healing. Tough for this team to deal with. However, 
it's a mixed phase team too, which is like tricky. For once, the near save actually does near save stuff, and and I was not seen through. My clever ruse worked. The trap queens, in fact, live up to their name. Lovely. Great news. Always nice when that happens. But, uh, yeah, they did, like, perfectly bait Igrin in, like, the one way that you can avoid her shenanigans. Uh, yeah, even if Igrin had gotten the jump down to here, there was no one to hit, so... That was a lucky one, honestly, but it is the team working exactly as intended, so I take it to the bank. Sorry to get you with it, Vanilla. And finally, we have the replay that broke me. The replay that broke me, and I think I want to make a little, little tiny, like, rant video essay type of thing about this. Because, just watch what happens. First of all, look who's back. Urgh. This dude always wins, we already know that. And it's this again to just kind of add insult to injury. So, just watch the first turn very clearly. Just, just pay attention to this with me. Just watch, just watch. Okay, so they've used all their actions, right? What do you notice about this? Does this look like a turn one that is safe to you? Because when I look at it, I see that this unit is going to have range expanded, put Krom in the danger zone, not be over the safety fence, it should aggro the AI, and my trap goes off, we swoop in, and dominate. Here's what happens. Apparently Citrine spreads after the safety fence check? Apparently Citrine spreads statuses after the safety fence check let's be very careful with our words but when they get the free turn like that I would, basically my whole clever trick was to like convince people that these two lanes were safe right over here and over here lean on me they're spamming duo skills to BM me or just because they're on TV and they want to I don't know it's probably not BM it's probably just fun or maybe it's because they want Actually, it's honestly probably that they thought some sort of weird thing was going to happen here and they wanted to be as defended as they possibly could be. And some vaguely weird thing does happen, and we actually get a KO out of it at least, so there's something there. But, um, like, the team was built around the two traps in this lane and this lane, and this lane's trap doesn't actually work! What's up with that? I hate that! Why does the game work that way? I deserved more! I thought so hard. I really tried my best, but I mean, ultimately, they did they did play it well. They took the sacrifice and got out without the pots. We played the last match of the week, and it doesn't matter if you lose 20 points most of the time. That's that. Anyway, that's uh, how the cookie crumbles. I don't think I'm gonna go back to this team. It's back to the drawing board, but it was a fun little experiment. I hope you had fun watching it. And once again, new computer setty, new recording setup setty. So let me know if anything was better or worse. Comment down below. Subscribe while you're there. And hopefully everything is just good. We can record more like this. I could be more prolific, more fun, more fey for you coming soon. So till then.